Hi, this is a quick walkthrough of our OER, which is called College Success. Um, right now I have the index pulled up, the table of contents, um, just so you can see how things are divided and how students can click on each one of these and navigate to a different chapter. Um, but to get to it, you go to the main uh, FIX template page, which our image disappeared yesterday. I don't know why I need to figure that out. And you can either click start here or you can go directly to modules. So if you click on modules, here, I'll go back to that. Um, I'll actually, I'll show you start here first. Start here takes you to this main page that everybody will fill in about themselves. Um, and then just some information about the course. I need to edit that. Um, so this first page just has some background information and you can add to this uh, if you would like. Um, make it your own. I'm going to say college success, our free course OER. Uh, you do not need to purchase a textbook for this class. So when you roll this over uh, to your class, this will be visible to all the students. So they'll know right away that they don't need to buy a book, um, which they'll also see if they go to the, um, the bookstore. So I'm just going to link that. So this is the Start Here page. And at the very bottom, um, they can click here on Modules to go to that same page that I was going to before. right? So if we go back to our main page, which we always do by just clicking the title or by clicking Home, if you just click Modules, you'll go right to this main page. Um, and it starts with some information for them, like accessing their email, the course schedule, um, and then a link to the textbook is right here. So let's go ahead and click on that. Um, and I'll show you again where that was. It says textbook under Welcome to FIX 100, which this is a module that can be opened and closed with that little arrow right there. So when it's open under textbook, click on College Success, our course OER textbook, and everything is right here. What's also nice about this, and again, that's the table of contents, is that under each module, students can easily see what they need to read. Um, so like this intro to module one, which is the very first part, tells us what we're going to be doing in this module, and you can edit this and add to it, or you can leave it as it is. And it also has links to all the readings. So it looks like a lot just because I divided it up, um, or Aaron divided it up actually, um, to make it shorter. So this readings and resources shows the students that they need to read these items and they can just easily click on them and it will take them to the reading. And the readings, what's very cool is they even include videos. Um, Dismissed so from students drama can school with a go right into these. Wasting your time. Uh, readings directly from the course calendar. I went back, but they could also click uh, next. So you have to answer. Sorry, I didn't read the question. <laughs> have to answer, and then there's. If I can make the screen bigger, there we go. There's next right there, and they can click on that, and then they'll go to the next reading, which is kind of cool. So they don't have to go back to that main page. But let's say we go back to our modules, and we're in our week one again. After they finish their reading, they have a syllabus quiz, this response called Getting to Know Each Other in FIX, which you could have them submit on Canvas, or you could have them submit it as a written assignment. There's a student scenario where students will watch a short video for homework uh, by a student named Zara, where she talks about missing um, her composition class last week, uh, and then you can I give the student some advice about what she should do. And I like the lost. So my students have this video, class. and they also have the text of the video, and then an article they can and read, and then they Our type in this box, and, and they respond. I need some feedback. I'm having trouble writing more than one. And then there's a reading quiz that goes with these readings, motivations, and goals. And then module two, which would be week two, has all new readings um, and new assignments, like the campus resource assignment that we're very used to, 
um, and the reading quizzes that we've had on Canvas um, for a while. And each of these introduces the module and again gives the, the readings that students will be doing. So whereas in our, let's see if I have this open. So in our prior um, course calendar, we would have the additional permissions are required. Maybe this is why you couldn't print this, let's see. Um, I need to look at what on earth. So whereas in our prior, this is so weird, our prior calendar, um, it would just say which readings we had for each week. Um, here it tells them the readings from the OER, the, the free textbook. Uh, so students can just look at this or they can honestly totally ignore this calendar and use the calendar on Canvas. And what's really cool is when a student's on Canvas, once you give due dates to these assignments, um, it will populate a student's calendar. And you can even put due dates on the readings. So the readings aren't graded, right? Um, but you can make it so it has um, a due date. So you click on Add Student to Do and give it a due date. And that way it shows up in their calendar and then you just press Save. Um, so that's really nice that students can then see it in their calendar and in addition to the assignments. And you can also add due dates to the assignments, which all the assignments should have due dates. So like let's say we want to put a due date on the getting to know each other in FIAX assignment, which is where they write and then share um, and respond to their peers. So you would just click edit. And if you want to run a plagiarism check, you can. You can choose to do that. Uh, here, where it says due, you click on that little calendar, you choose a date, you just click on that. I always put in our class time, so say if class is at 2 o'clock p.m., that would be the, the due time. And you can even make it so it's not available one week after. So they have one week after the due date to do it for late credit, and after that is for no credit. And then you would just hit save. Um, and I'm going to take that due date off just so we don't have any due dates on these that will mess things up. But that way you can um, make sure that it shows up on a student's calendar, too. And that, that really helps students. So that's a quick overview. This template is the same one we've been using. So there haven't been any changes other than that I, um, I changed the quizzes to match the OER readings. I added the OER readings. Um, and I added a few assignments like that one I showed you here, the student scenario. I added, I think, five uh, student scenario videos. So they're all different videos. Um, I saw another one down there recorded by students uh, where they're kind of just talking through real life examples of, oh, and the stuck on an escalator is another new thing I added. They're talking through different examples of uh, situations that our FIAC students may go through. So like this student, um, Dakara, she uh, talked about I've always wanted to be a psychologist. My mom's a psychologist. It just feels like the right career for me. I love to talk and share my ideas. So I think I could really test and learn that the best fits are. And then this one is a fun one. Students really enjoy this video it's called Stuck on an Escalator. And they respond. And this goes with locus of control, um, not taking action. Oh, I don't need this. I'm already... So that's kind of a quick walkthrough of the template and how the OER is integrated into it. Again, you can always get to this um, main page of the OER here, which just shows each chapter, just like a normal book. Um, and then when you click on these, it's, it's a chapter just like a normal book, but online. And, What's cool is there's you know some some videos in here too, which is really nice.